Seekers, I'm Nick Leanley. Just released their brand new 120mm Unifan SL Infinity RGB fans that feature lighting on the fan blades themselves and also on the fan frames. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install them when you buy one of the 120mm 3 fan kits. Now this guide does not apply to the older SL or AL120 Unifans, or the 140s in fact. Okay, let's do it. I just want to make this clear that this video is for demonstration purposes only. Every system, every case, and every cooling solution is different. This guide is to give you the fundamental understanding of how the lighting and the fans connect to the new Unifan controller for these SL Infinity Unifans. This guide is not about the correct way to install fans or how to do cooling or anything like that. This is not a discussion about pricing or performance. It's purely to help those who bought this kit. And if you've got any questions, make sure you watch the whole video before asking any questions because I'm probably going to answer most of them in this video anyways. Now, here's some answers to those inevitable questions that people are probably going to ask in the comments. No, this guide does not apply to the SL and AL Unifans. These new fans use a brand new connector and a new controller. No, you cannot connect the SL Infinity Uni fans without the controller. You could do it with the old ones, but not with these. Yes, it will work with AuraSync or RGB Fusion or Mystic Light or whatever, but you need to have the motherboard RGB Sync cable plugged in and enabled in L Connect. Now, we don't know about availability or pricing on these fans in your region or as of time of filming this video, so please refer to Dr. Google. Pretty sure you'll find the answers there. I'm not trying to sound mean, but just when we're making this video, we've got no idea. With that said, this guide is gonna show you how to plug everything in. We're gonna take a quick look at the new version of L-Connect and how to configure the lighting and all that stuff. And this video is not about cable management or anything like this, but yeah, these are probably the easiest uni fans to connect yet. So let's jump in. All right, these are the SL120 Infinity Unifans from Leon Lee, but let's get them out of the box and see what we got. First up, we've got the brand new connectors. Now, these are a single cable connector that don't use a PWM and RGB connector. It uses their own connector now for both of those things. And as you can see here, it's quite a wide connector. I'm not sure why they went down this route, but you know, they have their reasons. And also the contact pad is a lot smaller than the older uni fans. We've got a bunch of documentation as well, which we're not going to be looking at in this video because obviously that's the point of this video. We're going to be showing you all that stuff. There's also some included fan screws if you're mounting this directly to your case and not on a radiator and whatnot. We've got three of the new SL Infinity Uni fans. There's a bunch of plastic covering all the bits that you can scratch on here, which we won't go into. There's also some pogo pins, which are now in the middle of the fan, not towards one side. And the contact pads are also in the middle as well. Let's take a look at all of the accessories in the box. First up, we've got the USB cable. Now this needs to plug into the controller for full software control because you can't not use the controller with these new Infinity fans. There's also this, this is a addressable RGB cable and a PWM signal cable which will allow you to use motherboard pass-through for both fan and lighting. This cable however is optional. There is a splitter cable for both the lighting and fan signal however this one does not send PWM signal through the splitter cable whatsoever. And the new controller for the SL Infinity Uni fans. Now, there's a couple differences here. You can obviously see the new connectors. There's also connectors for older Uni fans as well, if that's something you wanted to do, as well as two SATA or SATA power connectors for the controller itself. I'm not sure why they're doing this, but it's probably a really good reason for it. And lastly is a magnet, which you can stick to the controller so you can attach it to your case without sticking it directly to it. Okay, let's take a look at what's new with these fans. So as I mentioned, the contact pads and the pogo pins are in the center of the fan now, not towards one side, and these are not compatible or cross compatible with the AL or SL Uni fans. These connect quite easily, basically just line these fans up with the notches on the fans and click them into place. Very similar to the older Uni fans. Now we'll do this from another angle so you can see the contact pads lining up with those pogo pins and the actual clips as well. And once you line those up, basically you just slide them into place 
and lock them. You can see there's some indicators on the fans themselves, which will show you the open position and the locked position as well. Next up, we're going to be connecting the fan cable to the pogo pins. This connects to the controller itself. Locate this cable here. Now I'm going to show you what not to do first. So this cable will only attach one way. It will not go in this way. It needs to go in the opposite way. Now you can't mess this up, but I thought I would just show you just in case. And basically you just line that up and slide that into place and the cable will lock itself in. I'll show you this from one more angle. Basically you just line it up with those pogo pins slide it into place and lock. You can see there's some indicators for locking as well. We're gonna plug in the side of the cable that sends the illumination and the fan signal through to the uni fans. You'll notice that it's keyed, so it only can be plugged in one way. You can't actually mess this up at all. It only goes in one way. Locate the first header on the controller itself and slide it into place. When you push it in, it'll actually lock so it won't come unplugged. You wanna locate the two SATA power connectors from the controller and locate two SATA power cables from your power supply. And all you need to do is plug both of those cables in, just push them firmly, they'll lock into place and Bob is your uncle. Finally, we'll need to locate the USB cable. We wanna plug the USB end into the controller as shown right here. Push in firmly, this cable will only plug in one way. It's not USB Type-C, it's micro USB, so it'll only go in one way. Then locate the side that plugs directly into your motherboard. You'll then need to locate a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard, then line the connector up, plug it in, and you should be good to go. Now this cable will only plug in one way, so it's very hard to plug this in the wrong way. Lastly, this is a good time to attach the magnet, which is also double-sided tape, but I would use it magnetized to the back of the controller and you should be good to go. Now, I'll show you a little bit of a flat lay here. So you can see that the cable comes from the fan frame all the way through to the controller. Then the controller plugs into USB into the header on your motherboard. I hope this is making sense to you guys. And lastly, the power, which is two SATA power connectors, go from the controller into your power supply. And both of these do need to be plugged in. Here's some optional things that we can do now. We can use the PWM signal and addressable RGB pass-through cable as well. So what you wanna do is locate this end of the cable. If we look closely at the controller, you can see next to the USB, there's a slot for this cable. Basically just plug this in firmly and it only goes in one way. So it's very hard to mess this up. Locate the three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard. We're going to be plugging in that pass through cable. Just line it up and push in firmly and we should be good to go. This cable only plugs in one way as well. Next, we need to locate a PWM fan header, which will send the fan signal and plug in this cable here to the motherboard, and then we should be good to go. Lastly, there's one thing I wanted to show as well, which is the splitter cable. Now, this doesn't send any fan PWM signals. The way this works is basically plug this into a spare slot on the controller, and then you can plug the fan frame into that. I guess this is included just in case you fill up your controller and you need an extra slot for your fans. Lastly, let's do another flat lay just to show you again. So we've got the fan frame here. We've got the cable coming from the fan frame into the controller. We've then got the USB cable that comes out of the controller that goes into your motherboard. Then we have the new optional cables, which are both PWM signal, which is fan signal and RGB that plug into a PWM header and a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard as well. And lastly, there's the power, which is two SATA cables that come from the controller that need to plug into two SATA power connectors on your power supply. What we've got here is the latest version of Ill Connect 3. This is probably the version that we're gonna see when the fans release as well. Now, I'm not gonna go through any of the other options here, just the lighting and fan modes for these fans. So you can see here on port one, we've got three fans connected. That's all that we've got connected here for this demonstration. So we'll just go through a few of the modes here. So we'll just go rainbow morph and you can see there's a little thing somewhere in the corner where you can see where these effects are. So this is all real time. We'll just go static color, apply to all. And you can see that much like the other 
uni fans. You can paint individual fans as well. So I'm not going to go into that. We'll just take a look at some of the effects here. Got the breathing rainbow. All these effects are pretty standard. Like we've seen all of these with other uni fans in the past as well. So nothing too exciting here. However, we can change the lighting mode for different sections of the fans as well. So I'll quickly show you how this works. So what you can do here is select the hub or the center of the fan and we'll change that effect for the center. We'll change that to rainbow so we can have some unicorn spew. Then for the frames and the outside of the fans, we'll change that to, let's go disco, I guess. And you can see now that the frames and the center has a different effect. I'll just change the effect on the center of the fan so it's a bit more visible, I suppose. As you can see, you can mix two different types of effects with the fans. And we'll just switch it all back to Unicorn's view because why not? Um... You've also got other little controls here like brightness. So we'll just drop the brightness. You should be able to see this now. Right, so we can change the brightness for all of these fans. We can change the direction of the RGB unicorn spew as well. And we'll just change the brightness back to 50% so you can see us applying it. And you might be able to hear this, but I'll change the fan modes as well. Now let's look at the fan modes. We'll change this to full speed and we'll see how loud they are. You'll probably be able to hear this as well. So we're not gonna leave it on this mode. It's a little bit too loud. And that's it, ladies and gents. If you have everything connected properly and the software's working, then they should look a little something like this. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below or head on over to our Tech Help Discord. Hopefully this video helped you. And if it did, let us know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. You can ring that notification bell to see when all of that stuff comes out and all that jazz. And if you didn't like this video, you know what to do. Tell us what you didn't like about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your winning with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek, and they do look very, very nice. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.